Hey, good morning once again, FCF. We are on day three of our journey where we're looking at waiting on God slash delayed blessings. Um, a lot of times the waiting is um, more than compensated for when God brings forth the blessing that uh, perhaps we have given up on or forgotten about, or maybe we're just not even sure what was coming. But the waiting is, is always more than worth it, we, we discover in the long run. So we're going to pick up with the story in Genesis again with Joseph. Uh, Joseph is an, an enormously um, important character in Scripture, in my opinion. You can read all about him from Genesis 37 all the way through 50. There's, there's no one like him in Scripture uh, other than, frankly, Jesus himself. There's not one word of condemnation or, or anything, any flaw that's pointed to in Joseph's character. And mind you, the, the guy had no Bible. He had no revelation of God in Christ. He, he was an extraordinary young man. Anyway, his story starts not that great. He uh, had the, the, un, the, the, the misfortune to be his dad's favorite. His, his dad, Jacob, was not the greatest dad. Uh, Joseph was his favorite, and the other brothers, there were 12 of them all together, they, they knew it. So let me start reading. Genesis 37, this is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, keep that in mind, 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. He brought their father a bad report about them. Now, Israel, that was the other name for Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of the other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he had made him a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So I'll stop there. You can kind of see the setup. He didn't exactly deserve it, but he didn't help it any when he gives, he, he's, kind of the, he's kind of dad's pet and dad sends him out to check on the brothers and he comes back and he rats on the brothers that they weren't caring for the flocks appropriately or whatever the case may be. If you read on the verses that come next, Joseph starts getting visions from God. And in these visions, he sees his entire family bowing down to him. When he is foolish enough to tell this to his brothers, they really hate him then. And so they gather him. One day he comes out to check on them. They gather him throw him in a cistern. Initially, they were just going to kill him outright, but uh, Reuben you know, urges them to just throw him in a cistern, and then they sell him to some Ishmael, Ishmaelite slave traders that come by. And so this kid, 17 years old, he's sold into slavery. He's taken into Egypt, into a country. He couldn't speak the language. He's, he's immersed in a new culture, and he will spend the rest of his life in Egypt. He will never ever leave Egypt. He is separated from his family at age 17 and that's where the story just gets more and more interesting. Let me pick up uh, reading in Genesis chapter 41, 46. Uh, and I should, I should give you a little bit more background on this. So, so let me really quickly. Joseph, uh, he, he serves loyally to a man named Potiphar in Egypt. He's kind of the household manager. But then his, uh, Potiphar's wife sets Joseph up on false charges. He goes to jail and he's, he languishes in prison for years. The head of the guard in prison puts Joseph in charge of things in prison because he's such a good guy and such a good worker. Pharaoh ends up having a very troubling dream, and in prison, Joseph had interpreted dreams for two of Pharaoh's employees. So they bring it up, or one of them brings it up to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh calls for Joseph. So Joseph, and this is where I want to pick you up, it says, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. 17, this nightmare starts for this young man. God gives him a vision of being the leader of his family. Now it's 13 years later, and he never knew where it was going to go. He didn't know if he was going to languish in prison for the rest of his life. He interprets Pharaoh's dream, and Pharaoh puts him second in charge of all of Egypt. And so there's going to be seven years of plenty uh, harvesting of crops, followed by seven years of famine. God shows this to Joseph in Pharaoh's dream. So Joseph starts storing up food. So then the famine hits, the famine year, seven years of abundance go, two years into the famine years, and Jacob, his dad, sends his brothers down to Egypt 
because they're starving to death. They need food, and they know that there is food in Egypt because it had been stored up by Joseph. Now, they don't know it's Joseph. They, they, they believe Joseph is dead. So they come to Egypt begging for food, and Joseph sees them, and he recognizes them because they haven't changed, but he's changed a lot. He was a 17-year-old kid who looked like a Hebrew. Now he's a 30-year-old Egyptian, and he was even older than that when they came, uh, who's dressed as an Egyptian, shaved as an Egyptian, and so forth. So he doesn't rec or they don't recognize him, but he recognizes them. So I'm going to pick up reading just a short excerpt in verse 45, where finally uh, he reveals himself to them. Uh, verse 4. Of verse or of chapter 45 it says, Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, Joseph said, uh, the, the, I'm the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there's been famine in the land. So if you add, add all this up, there have been seven years of plenty, two years of famine. says nine years. Joseph is, is literally 39. He's almost 40 years old. He's 39 years old. They last had seen him at 17. And so it's a warm, moving scene when he reveals himself to them. They're weeping on each other and so forth. So here's the point. Joseph, who had been through so much hardship, he understood. He says, God sent me here ahead of you to save lives. At the end of the story, in Genesis 50, verse 20, the brothers are once again just fearful for their lives. And Joseph says, you know, you meant it to me for evil, what you did to me, but God meant it for good. Uh, so Joseph understood things that most of us take a lifetime and still have a hard time understanding, that God sometimes will allow us to go through circumstances that we don't want, we don't deserve, we don't enjoy and they are for an indefinite period of time, and we don't know for certain that it's going to turn out well. So we're waiting, waiting, trusting God, still doing what is right in His sight. And then sometimes He brings tremendous delayed blessing. Joseph becomes number two in, in um, the kingdom of Egypt, and he saves his family. And it's in Egypt that the nation of Israel starts to form because of Joseph and the delayed blessing that God brought to his life. Maybe God has uh, a, a great blessing in store for you, disproportionate with anything you can even picture. Or maybe, like Joseph, you had a sense at some point in your younger years that God had something in store for you. So, something, I, I'm hesitant to use this term big because everything we do for God is big, and the smallest thing is big. But, but you had a sense that God had something significant for you to do but it seems like it's not going to come to pass. Hang on, because God tends to surprise us when we least expect it with these things. Thank you.